Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil. Welcome back to 3D Japan. And today we're looking at a couple of resins uh, that were sent to me. This, uh, this F39 I had heard about and it seemed like a pretty good flexible resin. So I reached out to the company and I you know, said, would you like me to show some? And they said, yeah, it's a great idea. And they said, would you also like to check out our brand new anti-impact resin? So I'm, yeah, sure, that sounds interesting. So they uh, sent them and I did a little bit of testing with them. Uh, first, I did uh, some tests to figure out exactly what exposure I should be using. And rather than doing the old flat tests that I've done before, I started trying these some of these uh, more 3D ones. This is the uh, uh, Starship test and this it worked out pretty well and as you can see it it is quite flexible you know, wings bend down and the little arches bend it's a little bit chilly in here and I found that with the flexible resin uh, if it's colder it doesn't quite flex as much uh, then I also tried these uh, the cones of calibration uh, this is not my final one so it's not perfect but uh, these are really cool too, that up there. Um, they make it really easy to see when you've got the exact uh, exposure that you need. On one side, you'll have uh, these cones like stalactites and stalagmites, and if they're not touching, then you just keep increasing the exposure a little bit and printing each time until all of them are touching each other and then you're good to go. So since this is flexible resin, I thought what would be fun to be able to flex? And then I thought way back to my very first 3D scanning video, which I'll link to up here. It's actually one of the most popular videos on the channel, if not the most. And I 3D scanned a rock. <laughs> I thought, wouldn't it be fun to flex with this rock? And it, the detail came out fantastic. It is white, so it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but it is very squishy. You can squeeze it down and then it you know, resumes its original shape after a few seconds. And then I thought, well, I've, you know, since it's white, I have the dye. Let me try dyeing some of it. And I found this uh, little planter online that I will link to in the description below. And gave us some blue dye and uh, measured out exactly what Cheetah Box said plus a little extra, and it was not enough. <laughs> so I have a failed print. But it's the part that printed does look great and uh, it does flex, so it you know, demonstrates for this purpose. But I think it looks really nice. And, and then. I was talking to a client who was uh, making some molds for uh, a large figure, apparently a very large figure, and he needed to uh, make a mold for the sole of the shoe. So he gave me the model and I printed this out. This is uh, a Timberland boot, but it's kind of like half sized. Uh, so you would just pour the you know, resin or whatever you want to use in there and then this can flex to get it out. And you can see this uh, flexes pretty easily, although like I said, it's a little chilly in here. But I have a hair dryer. See if, how it works if we warm them up. Okay, very old hair dryer, but it still works. Okay, that is warmed up, and yeah, it's definitely a lot more flexible and squishy. <laughs> but then, of course, it will just return back to its original shape. Yeah, so that's really cool. And then I moved on to the anti-impact uh, resin, and that one is uh, not quite white. It's very, very light gray. And one thing I noticed with this see yeah this one smells really bad <laughs> that's one thing uh, the 
So the uh, soft one, the F39, when you first clean it, it is very sticky uh, until it's finally cured and then it's fine. But that's one thing to note is after it's cleaned, uh, while it's drying before its final cure, you have to maybe keep it covered because any kind of dirt that gets to it will stick to it. Uh, but then, anyway, this one, yeah, it's really stinky. And it, it's actually kind of maybe gave me a little bit of a headache. So with, if you're sensitive to those kind of things, this one you might want to wear a respirator. Um, so anyway, uh, it is anti-impact. And I thought, well, if it's anti-impact, what kind of things would you want to print that are anti-impact? And I... I did a phone case. <laughs> so if you drop your phone, you don't really want it to break. And this is slightly flexible, but it's really a lot more rigid. But uh, it, the print came out looking great. Uh, this is for a phone that I don't own. I think it's for the uh, Galaxy S10. Um, at the time this came out, I had the Note 10. But uh, yeah, this uh, it looks like it would certainly fit the phone. Um, it has some interesting patterns on here. I'm not sure if they just came from because it's a long printing time or if it's from the, the texture of the lights inside my uh, vat or my printer. I don't know, but um, it, you know, if you were gonna sand that down, maybe you could get rid of that. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm gonna be testing this outside. This is what you saw me printing in the intro. Oh, set that down. And then, uh, since I was doing that planter, I thought, let me try that again. Um, I put a little bit of dye in. This time I added even more resin, and it still failed. <laughs> I don't know why they keep failing, but anyway, it looks good. Um, I used some red and I guess because it is slightly gray, it actually looks a little bit almost like a, um, I don't know, like something you would use for building a house with, like a light brick or something. But uh, anyway, it looks nice. It's kind of pinkish, kind of like a, a chocolate strawberry or something. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be, you know, pretty hard and impact resistant. So, I think that's that's all I've printed. So let's take this and the phone case outside and test them. All right, we're outside. I've got the models. I've got a hammer, and uh, let's see what we can do with them. It's a little bit windy. I hope it's not too loud. Okay, so as you can see, I bashed these up pretty good. Uh, first with the drop test, and then with the actual hammer. And really, it only left a few scuff marks. It's amazing. Uh, you can see a few scuff marks here, but you can't even feel any difference there. It still feels smooth. So that is fantastic. I'm really impressed with how well this held up. Uh, oh, something on there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's great. So I would actually really recommend this if you uh, were making a phone case or making maybe a housing for a, a, a drill or something that you think might get bashed around. Uh, yeah, this would be really good at that. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's solid. So yeah, so... Uh, Good on you, Resion. Uh, I don't know if it's Resion or Resi One. It looks like Resion to me. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 
it seemed to be a good product. And the uh, same thing goes for the, uh, the soft and rubbery F39 material. Yeah. So uh, that's it. I will have links to where you can find these. Thing is, they are a little bit more expensive than your regular resins. Uh, but I will have links to their website, or uh, I'll check Amazon to see if there's a link I can put there. And uh, you can ch go check it out for yourself. Uh, please remember to like the video if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe. Again, I'm getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. And I'm very excited for that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Leave a comment below if you have any questions.